Hi everybody, this is Kevin Purcell for Notebooks.com and as you see I've got my iPad set up right next to my new MacBook Air and I'm really excited to be able to show you my iPad app of the week this week. It's something that uh, when I first checked it out and tried it, it didn't work because uh, I believe, if I'm remembering right, they didn't have a version for the, the Windows computer but uh, now I've got a MacBook. And so I tried it now, and guess what? It does have a Windows version. So if you're a Windows user, you could use it. Uh, but it works in this way. The Air Display, the purpose of it is to allow you to use your iPad as a second display to your computer. Now that's really cool. What you do is you install Air Display, which we've got it right up there. And then you also install a little client. And we're going to show that to you here in just a second, get up close to it. And you install that little piece of software on your computer, and it will look for Air Display running on an iPad. And um, it's pretty awesome letting you use it as a second display. Alright, so now we're up close up here in the upper corner where we have the menu bar, and there we have the little icon for Air Display. What you do is make sure it's on. Right now I've got it turned on. You can turn it on and off. Uh, you can disable or enable. You can disable or enable auto connect, which means that uh, the minute the client finds the iPad app open and running, it'll um, connect to it. Uh, here is where we have the Air Display preferences. You open those up, and it has the different things. You know, the big on-off button uh, right down here. List of devices that are found. Uh, it has the settings over here. Uh, these are the things that it's been connected to. You can check for updates, various settings and things. Um, that's just a uh, system properties app. We'll go ahead and just, uh, close out of that. But uh, let's look at this. Now what happens when we fire up Air Display on the iPad? Pretty soon here we're going to have a device found here. Now we may have to refresh this by doing this and then going back down. There it is. Yeah. And we find it going. So we tap on it right there. Notice that the screen blanks out for just a second, a couple times, and it is working. So we'll show you that again so that you can see both of them running at the same time. Alright, so now we'll show you both of them. Tap on Air Display, it comes on. Go up here to the menu bar item. So because we had Auto Connect, it automatically connected. Uh, I didn't have to actually tap on it. And so there it is. Now, here's the cool thing. Um, over here on this side, I have a tutorial video from lynda.com playing how to use the Mac version of Word 2011. I'm not left-handed, but there you see. Just as if this was a secondary display, I fire it up. Now that's a little program called Cinch that allows me to automatically maximize by pushing the, uh, the screen all the way to the top. That's a, a neat little app that you can install on your MacBook or your iMac or Mac Mini. Um, but there you have it. So I can be watching the video over there and seeing what's going on in Word over here. Now what's really cool is the touch screen of your iPad is now an input. Save or press Command S or you can choose <laughs> File Save As. I keep forgetting I've got it on. And that'll open up the Save As dialog. Again, when the document's brand new, never been saved, either command will do the same So there you thing. go. See, you've got the video going. I can come over here and follow along what they're doing in the video over here. If I'm tired of uh, listening to that for a second, I can do that. You can throw over maybe a Twitter client, uh, put iTunes over there, and listen to music or play a video while you're working on something. Uh, you might want to have some internet web page up that you're monitoring some news or some video. Uh, just different things, uh, watching Hulu, whatever it is. If you want to throw something over there on a secondary display that you're running from your computer, this is a way for you to do that. I could see someone taking the iPad, handing it to somebody else. Uh, while they're demonstrating something on the computer, the person is able to quickly look at it on the iPad. They don't have to look over somebody's shoulder, that kind of thing. Um, and So that would be really uh, a useful tool uh, to have. Now, just so you know, it also has an iPhone client, so we will back out of the iPad, start it up here on the iPhone. Now we've got it running on the iPhone. Alright, so now it's 
uh, whatever was on the iPad has come back over here. With Word documents. You might hear the words document and template. Turn that off. So what we do then, we go up here to the menu, say, look, now it can find Kevin's iPhone. And it will find it. Refresh the screen. And see, there you have it. What we used to have on the iPad, we now have on the iPhone. Now, obviously, that's not really that useful. Uh, the, the screen is too small. We could put it in landscape mode. It's going to refresh itself again. A little slow, but maybe that's a little bit better. Um, this might be something for a real small thing like a, you know, a Twitter feed or something like that. Uh, but at least it's there, and, and it is usable. So that's Air Display. It's a very simple app. Unfortunately, it does cost a little bit uh, more than most apps. It's uh, $10 in the App Store, but uh, I think it's a, a real useful one. So this has been Kevin Purcell for Notebooks.com with Air Display, the iPad app of the week.